Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here. Guys, stay with me. Shalom. Today is March the 22nd when we're recording this video, but chances are when you guys are watching this video, the sabbatical year has already started. Wow. The Samita year. Mm -hmm. And in this video, we're going to be showing you some proof on how we know this is the Semitic year. We've covered it in a few videos, but we're just going to briefly touch on it here just so you have something to work with. But then we're going to get into the rules of the sabbatical year. Right. Most of the people watching this video are not farmers, mm -hmm. but they are Israelites. Mm -hmm. So they may not have to worry too much about tilling the land and growing and harvesting and stuff. But this is also the year of release. Right. So we're going to be talking about what we need to do to make sure that we get these promises of the scripture. Mm -hmm. Talking about the sabbatical year or the Shemitah. Now, we're looking here in Exodus chapter 23, which is the last chapter in the book of the covenant. Right. The book of the covenant starts in Exodus chapter 20. This is the contract that Israel is under right now. Talking about spiritual Israel, not really those Jewish people necessarily, but those people who actually keep the commandments. Right. This, these are the commandments. This covenant covers Exodus chapter 20 through chapter 23. And here at the end of this contract or this covenant, we hear about the seventh year. Matter of fact, would you go ahead and read verse 10? Okay. And six years thou shalt sow thy land and shall gather in the fruits thereof. So it's talking about how we are to handle our land. Mm -hmm. You know, we are the stewards of this land. Of course, this is our father's land. Right. And he has rules associated with how we are to manage this land. And one of the most important things we learn here is that we only can really plant and sow and till for six years. Right. And let's see what happens in the seventh year in verse 11. But the seventh year, thou shalt let it rest and lie still, that the poor of thy people may eat, and what they leave, the beast of the field shall eat. In like manner, thou shalt deal with thy vineyard and with thy olive yard. Now, like I said, we're going to get into these rules when we start to look in chapter 25 of the book of Leviticus. Mm hmm. These rules associated with the sabbatical year. Right. So essentially, the father is giving the land a Sabbath day just as he does the people. Yeah, and it kind of makes sense. Mm -hmm. I mean, the land is actually working pretty hard when you think about, you know, all the activity that's going on below the soil. Right. And then from history, we learn from the farmers that it's good to rotate their crops and such. Mm -hmm. Well, what that does is it gives the land the opportunity to recover. Right. Well, it turns out it's actually a biblical principle to give the land this rest. Right. Mm -hmm. But one thing is important to notice when we go on through this class are the rules associated with the sabbatical year being sure not to actually add any rules to what we see here. First thing we want to do is look over in the book of Maccabees. This is actually in 1st Maccabees chapter 6 verses 48 through 53 when we learn about the last known Shemit the year. Okay. The last time there was a sabbatical year in all of scripture, the last time somebody actually documented and wrote down when a sabbatical year took place mm -hmm. was in the sixth chapter of the book of Maccabees there in about verse 49. Okay. Would you go ahead and read that? Some of the king's army went up to Jerusalem to attack them and the king established camps in Judea and at Mount Zion. He made peace with the people of Beth Zor. And they evacuated the city because they had no food there to enable them to withstand a siege. For that was a Sabbath year in the land. So, like I said, this is the last time we hear about the sabbatical year. Mm -hmm. Last time anybody bothered to write down that they were experiencing a sabbatical year was during the time of the siege of Jerusalem back during the Maccabean period. Right. And then when we come back up, we can find out exactly when this year was, when this sabbatical year took place. Would you go ahead and read verse 20? Mm -hmm. They assembled together 
built siege towers and other war engines and attacked the Gentiles in the year 150. So this tells us when the sabbatical year was. This was actually in the year 150, but you have to ask the year 150 of what? Right. Well, if you come back to chapter one, you can actually know when this time frame took place dealing with Alexander the Great. Mm -hmm. This is when he actually went to war with King Darius. This was during the Battle of Issos in the year 333 BC. Okay. The reason why we bring this up is so that we can be sure that this year, the year 2023, is a Shemitah year. We can use that date back there in the book of Maccabees, chapter 6, to confirm that 2023 is a Shemitah year. All right. We simply do that by adding the 150 years that were talked about in verse 20. Right. Adding one year because there was no such thing as the year zero. Mm -hmm. And then we see that the year 2023 is actually a multiple of seven. Okay. Adding 315 sabbatical years, we see the year 2023, we will actually be in a Shemitah year, just like they were in the book of Maccabees. And this is just one way of proving it. I mean, we've covered this in many videos over the years, right. but you can actually look in the book of Jubilees chapter 50 and prove that the year 2023 will be a Shemitah year as well. Okay. Talking about the Jubilee year back there when they crossed the River Jordan. Again, all you have to do is add multiples of seven. Right. And you'll see that 2023 is a Shemitah year and 2024 will start the Jubilee year. Okay. But anyway, like I said, we've covered this in many videos. So let's get into what it is that we're supposed to do on the Shemitah year, the sabbatical year. What are the rules associated with it? Right. Looking in Leviticus chapter 25, if you would, go ahead and let's read some of this. Okay. And the Lord spoke unto Moses in Mount Sinai, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, When you come into the land which I give you, then shall the land keep a Sabbath unto the Lord. Now, this is important to understand. Notice how it says, when, he, when you come into the land that I give you. Okay. There's, that's why there's so very few people around the world who is actually paying attention to it at all. Mm -hmm. These would be like the first fruits, those that are a little bit ahead of the game. Mm -hmm. But it is after this transition that everybody who is still yet alive will start to pay more attention to this sabbatical year. Okay. You got to remember the promises of the Bible is that after the apocalypse, the angels start to play a bigger role in our agriculture. Mm -hmm. So they'll be governing the timing of such. Okay. But anyway, let's go on to verse three. Six years thou shalt sow thy field, and six years thou shalt prune thy vineyard, and gather in the fruit thereof. Now notice how specific this is here. It's talking about pruning thy vineyard and sowing thy field. Right. Okay, let's go on to verse four. But in the seventh year shall be a Sabbath of rest unto the land, a Sabbath of the Lord. Thou shalt neither sow thy field nor prune thy vineyard. This is what we were getting into earlier when we were talking about adding to these rules. Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of people start asking questions like, can we mow grass? Right. Can we cut down trees? Right. Can we dig holes? <laughs> yeah. All of that stuff is not covered <laughs> in here. And so we have to be real careful. And, you know, of course, we want to read between the lines, but we don't want to add to those lines. Right. And to err on the side of caution, we just you know, don't add to the rules. We don't take anything away, but we don't add anything to them. Right. All right. So let's go on to verse five. That which groweth of its own accord of thy harvest, thou shalt not reap. Neither gather the grapes of thy vine undressed, for it is a year of rest unto the land. So it keeps talking about the sowing of the field and mm -hmm. what's growing out there, what's harvesting or what's ready to be harvested out in the field. And it's talking about these grapes. Right. We just can't harvest those or anything else during this year. Mm -hmm. So there's no harvesting this year. No right. tilling and no harvesting. All right, let's go on to verse six. And the Sabbath of the land shall be meat for you, for thee and for thy servant and for thy maid and for thy high servant and for thy stranger that sojourneth with thee. Everybody, mm -hmm. everybody in camp 
is subject to the sabbatical year. Right. Somebody can't pop up and say, hey, I don't believe in a sabbatical year. They're going to go out there and start working the field while everybody else is letting the land rest. Mm-hmm. So that's why he names all of these people, even the stranger that sojourneth with you. Right. The person all that of- come to visit. Right. All of these people who would be a part of your community, a part of your homestead, um, he included them. All right. Let's look at verse seven. And for thy cattle and for the beasts that are in thy field, shall all the increase thereof be meat. So they can actually eat it. The animals can eat what they want. Mm -hmm. They can go out there and harvest all of the grass and weeds and stuff that they want. They're not having an effect on the land. Right. All right, let's look at verse 8. And thou shalt number thy Sabbath of years unto thee, seven times seven years, and the space of the seven Sabbath of years shall be unto thee forty and nine years. So that's talking about the Jubilee. Mm-hmm. And this rest of this chapter gets heavily into the Jubilee year. Okay. Which is every 49 years. We'll cover that in another video. We want to talk more about the sabbatical year. But I will remind you guys that the Jubilee year actually starts next year this time about. Mm-hmm. And that brings me to the next section of the Bible that I wanted to look at. And that's Deuteronomy chapter 15. Because of what it says there in verse 1. Would you read that? Okay. At the end of every seven years, thou shalt make a release. Notice here it says at the end of the seventh year. Right. So we're at the beginning of the seventh year. Mm -hmm. So this end of the seventh year actually points to the spring of 2024. Okay. When we're expecting that X across America for the end of those 400 years Mm -hmm. that we hear about in Uh, The book of Genesis chapter 15 back there with Abraham. Okay. This, I just wanted to stress this here. I was talking about the end of the sabbatical year is when we get this release. There's a lot of people who will will be eyeing this release. They'll be, you know, keeping their eyes out looking for this release. Well, we see here that it's toward the end, not necessarily the beginning. Okay. And that also reminds me of what we read over in the book of Jubilees with the crossing of the River Jordan. Mm -hmm. They actually crossed the River Jordan at the beginning of the Jubilee year, which is the end of the sabbatical year. Right. And so I think that's part of our examples given to us in these living parables on how the events went down back there with Joshua. Right. We actually want to get into another video that talks about some of the other events on the sabbatical year. We'll want to do it in another video because it'll take a lot more time. But what we find out is that our Messiah's first coming was during the sabbatical year. Hmm. The first temple was constructed during the sabbatical year. Okay. The first temple was destroyed in the sabbatical year as well. Back there with Nebuchadnezzar. And the second temple was destroyed in a sabbatical year. Well, so this could uh, be the beginning of um, a very interesting year. And some of the guys watching this video are aware of the Third Testament of the Bible, which was written in 1884. Well, it turns out 1883 was actually a sabbatical year. Okay. Well, like I said, we'll cover that more in another video. We just want to get into the rules in this one. So let's look at verse two in Deuteronomy chapter 15. Okay. And this is the manner of the release. Every creditor that lendeth aught unto his neighbor shall release it. He shall not exact it of his neighbor or of his brother because it is called the Lord's release. So this is talking more about debts. Right. This is the year of debt release. Right. And that's why a lot of people look at the stock market and other things going on to try to find evidences of the Sumita year back in like uh, 2016 and stuff Mm -hmm. or 2009. But you have to remember who it is that are getting these blessings. Right. Not everybody Mm -hmm. is going to get this release. Right. And that's why you don't hear too many people in the religious groups talking about this year of release. Right. They're not doing what they have to do in order to get this release, like keeping festival days and Sabbath days and following the covenant and such. These are biblical promises. Right. You know, at the beginning, um, you know, he said, speak to the children of Israel. And as you said, um, when we first started this video, that 
Israel is spiritual. Yeah. So they definitely wouldn't have um, been called to, I guess, partake in this release because they are not, neither do they claim to be the children of Israel. Talking about the Gentiles. Right. And I think this is why we've seen so little evidence of anything happening, because in order to be considered spiritual Israel, in order to take advantage of this, you're going to have to go through the acceptable year of the Lord that our Messiah taught us. Mm-hmm. He taught us about keeping feast days and mm-hmm. following rules and all of that, just like the disciples did. We have to follow those rules, obey the scripture. And then, like I said, we can get these biblical promises. Right. But let's go on. Number three. Of a foreigner, thou mayest exact it again, but that which is thine with thy brother, thine hand shall release. So again, not everybody's going to get this release because it's like you're saying here, the foreigner, you can still get the money from them. You can still get the debts that they owe. Mm -hmm. It's really only this certain group of people that's going through this release every seven years. Right. Save when thou shall be no poor among you. For the Lord shall greatly bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee for an inheritance to possess it. So earlier we was talking about how he said when he gives you the land. Mm -hmm. So he gives us the land first. Mm -hmm. And of course, there'll still be poor people, you know, trying to figure things out. Right. But he he seems to imply here that eventually all of those who are keeping the Shemitah year are going to figure it out. And then we're not going to have to worry about poor people anymore right? or something like that. Y'all let me know what y'all think in the comment section. Well, we're going to go on. Only if thou carefully hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe to do all these commandments, which I command thee this day. This is notice how it says only mm. if, which I always say that if is the most important word in the Bible. Yeah. Only if. Thou carefully hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. So those people who, like I said, are playing by their own rules, not carefully hearkening unto the voice of the Lord thy God, which we only find in the scripture. They're not listening to that voice. And so they're not going to be able to take advantage of this release. As well as not only hearken, but to observe, to do all these commandments. You have to do the commandments. You know, it's kind of funny how people think that, you know, only with, Uh, I'm going to say with the business of the father doing things um, concerning him, are you able to get something for nothing Mm -hmm. with everybody else? You know, you usually have to do something in order to receive something. But when it comes around to doing things for the father, they just, you know, expect him to just give it to him just because he's, you know, the father. Well, that goes back to pagan God worship right? where you go in and you pull the God down off of a shelf and rub his belly a few times <laughs> and, you know, and then put him back up on the shelf. If whatever you was hoping for materializes, then you blame it on that yeah. particular God. And if it doesn't, you just, Go reach and grab you another God and pull him down until you, whatever you want actually happens. There's, right. There's, you know, but with our father, like we said, the word if is the most important rule in the Bible. If we obey the commandments, we will get the promises. Mm-hmm. If we don't, we're not going to get these promises. <laughs> That's just, true. Just that simple. Number six. Well, the Lord thy God blesses thee as he promised thee. And thou shalt lend unto many nations, but thou shalt not borrow. And thou shalt reign over many nations, but they shall not reign over thee. So this is talking about this release. Right. It's also talking about the promises that the head will become the tail and the tail will become the head. Mm-hmm. He's saying no longer are you going to have to be the borrower, but you're actually going to be the lender. Mm-hmm. That's big. Mm-hmm. That's very big. Okay. Number seven. If there be among you a poor man of one of thy brethren within any of thy gates in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou shalt not harden thy heart, nor shut thy hand from thy poor brother, but thou shalt open thy hand wide unto him, and thou shalt surely lend him sufficient for his needs in that which he wanted. Talking about the poor people around us and how important it is for us to look out for them. Right. Beware that thou be not a thrall in thy wicked heart, saying, The seventh year, the year of release, is at hand, and thine eye be evil against thy poor brother, and thou givest him naught, and he cry unto the Lord against thee, and it be sin unto thee. So you could imagine somebody today, we're 
the meet the year won't start for another few hours. But suppose I come up to you and say, hey, man, I need to borrow a little money. Mm-hmm. Well, the Shemitah year starts in a little while. Right. Which means that I'm going to borrow it today. Right. And then tomorrow is going to be released. Right. So essentially you're giving it to me. Mm-hmm. But that's what the, the father's saying here. Don't be doing that. Yeah. But but the year of release is not until the end, though. Right. Um, yeah. But was- still, you have people saying, no way, I'm going to let you borrow <laughs> something at the beginning of the Shemitah year you're not going to pay it back. That's a very cunning person who, you know, who definitely keeps up with it and then right at the right time uh, come in and ask for something. Yeah, let me yeah. borrow. Let me borrow. <laughs> I need to borrow something. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it is him, that cunning person who will actually pay for that. The giver is innocent. Right. The giver is innocent. And even in this situation here, he will actually probably be more blessed knowing that this is actually going on, knowing that this person could be taking advantage of them. Right. And, and we learn still giving him. Yeah, and we learn about this, you know, a lot in the book of the Shepherd of Hermes. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. We have to give. For the poor shall never cease out of the land. Therefore I command thee, saying, Thou shalt open thy hand wide unto thy brother, to thy poor, and to thy needy in thy land. And if thy brother, a Hebrew man or a Hebrew woman, be sold unto thee and serve thee six years, then in the seventh year thou shalt let him go free from thee. So here is actually talking about physical person. Right. He's talking about debts earlier, but this is actually talking about a servant. Mm-hmm. He only gets to serve you for seven years and then he has to be let free. Okay, so how do we equate that into today's time? Well, in today's time, right? nothing. Most people don't have any Hebrew servants working for them like this. Right. I mean, mm-hmm. all of the Hebrew servants are down there working for Mr. Charlie, mm-hmm. getting a paycheck. Once we go through this transition and our father's people emerge on the other side, you can imagine how many poor people are going to come out of the woods needing some help. Right. And they're going to be willing to hire themselves out for food and such like that. And so then... This is what it's talking about. Somebody will come and they'll work for you for seven years in order to provide for themselves and for their family, recovering from this apocalypse. And then after the seventh year is when you'll release them with all of these extra benefits that we'll read down here. Like you said, basic instructions before a level event. Well, we learn these instructions now so that we know what to do after. It's one of the things we don't want to be doing after the apocalypse is having these so-called Hebrew servants or these Israelites working for us for more than seven years because that's going to bring curses. Right. Verse 13. And when thou sendest him out free from thee, thou shalt not, not let him go away empty. So this is talking about great substance. Great substance. That what we read about in Genesis chapter 15 and verse 14. Mm -hmm. So this is part of the release. Matter of fact, go ahead and read 13 and 14. And he said unto Abram, Know of surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them for 400 years. And also that nation whom they serve, Will I judge, and afterwards shall they come out with great substance. So we're talking about spring of 2024 Mm -hmm. is the end of this sabbatical year, which aligns up with this year of release that we hear about here. This could be our last year under these current systems, the way things are before they actually start to change dramatically over the course of this next year or so. Right. But again, it's important to understand who it is that's going to benefit from this. Mm-hmm. And that would be those um, who are keeping these commandments, like yeah. Passover coming up and unleavened bread and all of the rules associated with these feast days. Mm-hmm. This walk is not hard or anything, but there are certain milestones that we have to hit every year. The acceptable year of the Lord is extremely important. We can't just play religion and play church and act like we're going to set up our own ways of doing things, ignoring what the Bible actually says and expect to get anything good out of it. Again, that's why you don't hear people even talk about it. Right. Mm -hmm. Most of the channels, they 
not even talking about this year release at all. Mm -hmm. Well, they're not actually talking about keeping any of the other commandments either. Right. So there are the rules associated with the sabbatical year, Mm -hmm. when it is and what we are supposed to be doing, Mm -hmm. when we should see some of these promises of this sabbatical year. And like I said, we'll cover the Jubilee year in a future video. Right. So you guys make sure you subscribed so you can see some of those videos when they come out. And in the meantime, y'all check out some of these other videos we've done on the sabbatical year and the Jubilee year. And with that, we're going to say Shalom. Happy New Year. And Happy Shemitah.